How do you decide if you should have a water maker or not? Only you can answer that. But there are four questions that you can ask yourself to see if you can get closer to figuring out the answer. Hi, I'm Nika Waters and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast, your podcast source for answers to all your cruising questions, even those you're not quite sure you had in the first place. Slow down, slow Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Rainman Watermakers and SeaTask. Rainman Watermakers are capable of producing up to 37 gallons of fresh, clean drinking water per hour from seawater. Portable and installed models are available, all with off the shelf parts. Configurations are available in AC, 12 volt DC, and even a gasoline system, with new 2019 models being smaller, lighter, and quieter than ever. SeaTask is the premier U.S. facility for Rainman Watermakers. Visit them at www.seataskgroup.com to learn more. That's S E A T A S K G R O U P.com. So, how do you decide on whether to get a watermaker or not? This question comes up over and over and over again with a couple of variations, but in general, it's do I need to get a watermaker? Sure, the answer is it depends. And if somebody tells you right off the bat, you absolutely must or absolutely know you shouldn't, please run away because those people aren't taking into account your particular situation. You will totally have to answer it for yourself. Here, however, are four questions that you can use to help guide your answer so that you get closer to the right answer just for you. And remember, you're the one who has to live with your decision. You have to live with the budgetary constraints, with the installation constraints, the cruising constraints, and all the rest of it. So please absolutely spend some time to figure out the answer just for you. You might be thinking, why should I be the one to answer this? Well, and I, I'm not answering it for you. I'm trying to help you come up with the right question so that you can answer it for yourself. But I have cruised with a water maker and I've cruised without a water maker. I spent the first three years cruising without a water maker. And then we went and cruised for a year with the kids with a water maker on board. And I will tell you, if we had not been handed the water maker, we would not have gone with one. The, for us, it came down to a budgetary conversation. We couldn't justify forking over $2,000 or whatever it was in, 20, in 2009 when we went with the kids. We couldn't fathom forking out that kind of money for a one-year cruise with the kids. So a number of those things are going to come in when I think about the questions, when I share the questions that I have with you that you should ask to figure out if you need a water maker. But I will remind you, that people cruised for years and years and years and years before water makers were even a remote possibility. So do you need one? Like, could you, are, are you physically incapable of cruising without a water maker? No, you totally can cruise without a water maker. It is very possible, and there are lots and lots of people out there cruising, it is very possible to cruise without a water maker. So just know that you can define need a different way, but is it one of those things I mentioned earlier, if you want to go cruising, you have to have a boat. That's sort of one of the non-negotiables. Having a water maker on board, despite what some people will tell you, is not a non-negotiable just in terms of going cruising. But that said, here are the four questions to ask yourself. Question number one, what is my budget? Water makers are expensive. There's no way around it. You can spend all kinds of money on a commercially available unit. I've seen some that are listed at $10,000 and I've seen ones that are listed at, you know, two or $3,000. You can certainly build your own if you're handy. There are a few different YouTube uh, channels that give you some of that information. And certainly that's a topic that comes up on a lot of cruising forums. Again, remember that the cost is one thing and then your time is the cost of of another of it. So it's not that you're getting paid for the time that you're spent on it, but think about it. If you're if you're relatively handy and you like figuring out that kind of thing, then that might work really well for you. You also can look at a used one. You might also be able to find a used one. The initial 
cost of the unit, though, is only the tip of it. Isn't that true with just about anything that you buy for the boat? Because then there's installation. There's the cost of the energy that you use to power it. So before you get all excited about finding the perfect water maker, make sure that you have the energy to power it. Make sure that you have the money in your budget for the maintenance that it's going to require. People talk about pickling. They talk about new membranes. They talk about all those kinds of things. So think about all the costs that go into a water maker and what your budget is. So question one is what is your budget? Side note, buying water in some places can be very expensive. If you're used to cruising on the east coast of the U.S., you may be used to going into some place and just filling up on good water almost any place you go. There are a lot of places in the world where buying water is required. Question number two, which I just alluded to, is how long is my cruise? Because let's face it, if you're talking about a budget, you're probably also thinking about how long your cruise is going to be. In the United States, we tend to think about the cost of things that cost a lot of money on what it costs per month. Whether this is a good thing or a bad thing is a whole other conversation. And sometimes this helps us get over the mental block on the price of cars or homes. It can be sort of eye-opening when you think about what the cost of that water maker is on the bottom line. So if you're going to the Bahamas for six months with the idea that you'll sell the boat and not cruise after that, if you're buying a $4,000 or $5,000 water maker, that becomes a whole lot more expensive per month than if you're talking about let's go cruising for the next 10 years. The upfront cost is the same, but for how much you'll use it on a monthly basis, it's far different. One way to think about it is $10,000 for six months is really different than $10,000 for 10 years. It may make sense to look at the total amount of money available to you and break it down. If you have $50,000 in total to buy a boat, outfit it, and provision her and sail away, you might decide that you can be out for six months. If you already have the boat and have that $50,000, your timeline might be longer. So take it all into account. And you may decide that you'd rather schlep water and be able to cruise for an extra five months than to have that water maker. And you also may decide that you'd like to not schlep water for the time that you're cruising, even if you can't stay out as long. But thinking about how long your cruise is, is definitely a factor when thinking about, do you really need a water maker? Question number three is, where am I going to be cruising? If you're cruising on the east coast of the U.S. or even in the eastern Caribbean, where you're close to population centers, and often the possibility of bringing the boat alongside the dock for fuel and water refills, that's one thing. But if you're talking about a 30-day jaunt across the Pacific, that's something else entirely. Think about the availability of water in the places that you're trying to cruise and planning to cruise. And sometimes thinking about catching rain, yeah, it's a possibility. And remember that it's possibility because unless you've figured something else out, and if you have, I want to know about it because I'd like to invest in what you're planning on doing. But unless you have figured out that you know exactly when it's going to rain where, it's definitely just still on the possibility list. Alternatively, if you're planning to be in busy industrial harbors where the water is really not clean enough to run the water maker, that is also something else to consider ahead of time. Membranes are expensive. That's one of the most expensive parts, in my understanding, of having a water maker. If you're running it in oil-filled harbors, you may have to go through those membranes a lot more quickly. So think about where you're cruising when you're thinking about whether you need a water maker or not. And the last question is, and it's kind of two, uh, how many people do I have on board with the water tankage that I have? And side corollary to this is, do I have a pressurized water system? Every single boat has water on board, whether that's in integral ta tanks or even just jerry jugs that you carry on the side. But every single boat carries some water on board and I'll say that even if you have a water maker, you're still going to want this. Check the size of your tank. A larger capacity means that you've got more time between filling up. If you carry 20 gallons of water, you will need to fill up more frequently than if you carry 200 gallons of water. That's just a fact. On land, we're really, really used to using water as if, well, you can turn the tap on and there it is. 
And even if you're being cautious and mindful, it's really easy to go through 50 gallons of water per person on a typical day. But on a boat, that kind of usage, you would quickly be out of water. Pressure water on a boat does make it really easy to use water in the same kind of way. Although I don't know any boater who comes remotely close to that. Think about that. And probably most boats, most boats that you're, re- that you're looking at and thinking about to go cruising will have pressure water. We're a little different in our choice of no pressure water on board. If you have a baby in diapers on board, if you're washing those diapers by hand, you're going to go through more water. If you have a baby on board, unless your kids are much less likely to spit up and have diaper blowouts than mine were, you're going to be just washing clothes more frequently in general. So you'll use more water. If you have a crew of six people aboard, you will use more water than if you have a crew of two. So think about the combination of pressure water, how many people, and how much water tankage do I have, all combined with, of course, your budget and where you're cruising. And if you have the combination of a large crew with a small capacity of water, this might tip the scales more towards getting a water maker than something the other way around. So there you have it. There are four questions that you can ask to help you get closer to the answer for yourself of, do I need a water maker? You've got to ask yourself, what's my budget? How long's my cruise? Where am I cruising? How many people do I have on board with what water tankage? And is my water system pressurized? So the bottom line is you have to ask yourself the questions. I will say, as I said earlier, If we had not been gifted that water maker the last time we went, we would not have bought one. We're on a small boat with a lot of water tankage. I mean, we've got, we carry 120 gallons on our 28 footer. We don't have a pressure water system and we do have a good way of catching water with our awning. We're used to being careful with water and our kids have grown up with that sensibility. And our experience in the Bahamas when we went in the early 90s had been that we could find water lots of places and collecting it actually added to those memories. The second time we went out, we were only planning one winter in the islands. So our cruise was, by our standards, a pretty short one. That said, having cruised with a water maker, we won't cruise again without one. Yes, we had maintenance issues. Once we got used to having the thing, we wanted it working. But being able to spend weeks in the far out islands of the Bahamas without worrying one single tiny bit about water, that was a luxury we actually mentioned almost every single day. Right now, it's 2019, and we still have the same unit that we had in 2009. And it's likely that we'll start out by using the same one again, although, hello, we're going to have to get a new membrane because we didn't pickle it although we are eyeballing a larger one that's more efficient. And when I say more efficient, it means going to pump out more water in the same amount of time so you don't have to run it constantly. We actually now have a small generator, so that's a different conversation altogether too. But for us, and what I want you to be aware of, is that it's a matter of budget priority, energy, space, and time, And then the next question is, you know, for us is, will the old one still work? We have no idea, but we're going to try it before we jump ship and do something new. And then that leads to the next question, which will be a whole other podcast coming up in the future, which is, which water maker should I choose? There you have it. Four questions to ask yourself to figure out if you actually need a water maker or not. Thanks so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We do our best to answer questions that you have about the cruising lifestyle, because let's face it, we think it's pretty amazing and we can't wait to see you out there. Let us know what you think, drop us a line, and we look forward to talking to you next time. Bye for now. Slow down.